Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord Jesus all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we just bless your name in this place right now. Lord Jesus, we declare you the King of kings and we declare you the Lord of lords. And you're worthy of our praise, Lord. Lord, I thank you that during praise and worship, I heard you say that you're the king. And Lord Jesus, we surrender this day to the authority of the king. Yes. Lord, we surrender to the anointing of the king. Lord, we surrender to the will of the king. And Lord Jesus, we repent this morning for rebellion in this house. Lord, we repent this morning, Lord, for us seeking our own will. Lord, we repent for offense, Lord God, in this house. And Lord Jesus, I ask today, Lord, that you will help us in this new year where you said you are going to do so many amazing things. Lord, to go through the doors that you are opening up. Lord, not to open up doors that you don't desire to be opened, Lord. And Lord, I ask as this word is released today, Lord, may you close doors that need to be closed. And Lord, may you open up doors that you desire to be opened, Lord. Yeah. Lord Jesus, we surrender to your authority. Yeah. And Lord Jesus, we ask right now that you will be with those in this body that are recovering from illness, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we ask that you would touch Pastor Cindy in the yeah. hospital. Yeah. Lord, we ask that you would heal her from the top yeah. of her head to the tip of her toes. Yeah. Lord, we yeah. declare yeah. oxygen oh, levels yeah. are going up, blood yeah. levels are going up. Yeah. Lord, we yeah. Declare even now your presence yeah. is filling your hospital yeah. room. Yeah. And Lord, we just bless her now in your yeah. name. And Lord, we love you. We yeah. love you. We love you. Lord, we plead your blood over those in this body recovering from COVID. Yeah. Lord, we ask God that you would touch them and heal them and restore them, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we command the COVID to come out of their system, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And Lord, we speak a returning of divine help to them. Yeah. Lord, we command fog to leave their minds. Yeah. Lord, we ask God that you would heal them and restore them and bless them, Lord God. And Lord, may it be in the spirit as if they're in the sanctuary with us right now, Lord God. Yeah. And Lord, we just ask today, God, that you'll release that anointing of healing over this entire body, Lord Jesus. Lord, we send your blood against the spirit of infirmity. Lord Jesus, we command that spirit to go into the abyss in your precious name right now. Lord Jesus, we declare Isaiah 53, 5 over everyone that's part of this house, Lord. You are pierced for our transgressions. You are crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace was upon you and by your wounds, your stripes. We've already been healed. Lord, we speak a release of your blood and your healing and your restoration, Lord God, over everyone in this house. And Lord, we speak that the curse of sickness is broken through the blood of the Lamb. Lord Jesus, through your blood, we break every hex, vex, curse, and spell sent against this house. And Lord, we just repent for anything that we've done that's grieved you, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we repent right now. And Lord Jesus, we surrender afresh and anew to you, Lord. Lord, you said you're going to do amazing things this year. Lord, we crouch into a place of humility and submission in you. And we cry out, God, we want these things with all of our hearts, Lord. But Lord Jesus, more important than everything you said that you're going to do this year. Lord Jesus, may you be our one thing in the midst of all the amazing things that go on. Lord, may we keep our eyes on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, may you be pleased and honored and glorified in this house. In Jesus, we pray this in your precious name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the lights are coming on this morning. How many are excited about the Lord Jesus? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, were you blessed in the word last week about prayer and fasting? Yeah, man. Amen. You know, Brother Rob came up to me after that word was delivered. He said, the two toughest words to ever deliver are words on tithing and words on fasting. Uh -huh. And I said, Brother, you are absolutely right. But I'm excited because the body received the word that was released that last week. Amen. Yeah. And this week, Hallelujah. We're going to fast on Thursday in intercession. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage the body to fast. Holly and I are going to be fasting after dinner on Wednesday night to after intercession on Thursday night. If the Lord leads you to a longer fast, hallelujah, we'll see where God takes that. But God wants us to begin fasting together as a body. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. Are you ready to receive a word from the Lord right now? Yes. Amen. This morning, I'm excited about the word that the Lord's going to release in the house. He's allowed me a couple times in previous years to preach on the remnant church. And how many know that we are part of the remnant church? Yes. I want to remind everybody, even as I bring up the terminology remnant church, we are not the remnant church. We're part of the remnant. Yes. Amen? Yes. We never want to become exclusive and think it's all about us and what God's doing here. We're part of a mighty move that God is doing. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. So the Lord says that he wants me to teach today on cultivating a remnant heart at the end of the age. Cultivating a remnant heart at the end of the age. How many know that we're part of a remnant body, but the Lord says, I want to cultivate in you a remnant heart. Because if we're not careful, we can be a part of a remnant body, but not walk with a remnant heart. And so today, God wants to show us some things that he wants us to begin to develop in our lives in this upcoming year as we press into him, as we hunger for, that's going to allow him to begin to bring a shifting and a change in our hearts that's going to begin to change everything within us and then around us. Yes. Are you willing to receive that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe in the earth that God's about to release a Joel chapter 2 move. I really believe that in the Lord. And how many believe that you're called to be a part of that? Amen. You're called to be a part of God's Joel chapter 2 movement. Hallelujah. And in hallelujah, we are going to see Joel chapter 2 released in this house and spill out of this house in 2022 and go all over this region in the name of Jesus. Amen. All over the apostolic state of Illinois, throughout, hallelujah, the United States of America, Israel, and the earth, we are going to see a mighty end times move of God. And God is preparing the heart of the remnant church for that movement. The Lord Jesus spoke to the, the people in the age in which he was ministering. And he said, you know the word. He said, you can even look at the sky the night before and understand from what you see what the weather will be like the next day. But you don't understand the signs of the times. And the bridegroom is revealing to his people, his bride, hallelujah, his remnant church with a remnant heart, the signs of the times. And the signs of the times are speaking to us that the Lord is coming back soon. Do you receive that? Yes. So God says, I want you to be the bride that makes herself ready. How many know right now there are millions of people all over this nation gathering together for church? But not the entire church will be the bride. The bride is the one, according to the book of Revelation, that's making herself ready. So not everybody in the church is the bride. The bride is the one right now drawing near to the heart of the bridegroom, surrendering to the moving of the Holy Spirit, being willing to be changed and transformed and positioned for what is happening, allowing the Holy Spirit to take her through sanctification so she can be the bride without spot and without wrinkle. The bride is the one that's willing to be woken up at two in the morning to pray, is willing to fast, is willing to shut off the TV, is willing Willing to surrender to the Lord and be positioned for what it is that God's about to do. So let me ask you a question. How many in this room are part of the bride? 
Amen. 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 How many are making themselves ready? There's nothing about the movement of God that we're about to see that's going to be convenient. God wants to mess up our hair, mess up our schedules, and take us to places where we've never gone before in Him. I was in the secret place yesterday and I heard the Lord say, Andrew, I'm looking for a people who are willing to do things differently than what they've done in previous seasons so that I can bring forth a different result. Has anybody received that in the Lord? Yes. So don't be surprised right now if God is calling you to do things differently. If you've been called to intercede and you intercede hours a week, if God's not calling you to intercede even more than that. If you're a faster, don't be surprised if God is saying fast even more than you are. If God is saying spend more time with Him, be more willing, look for divine appointments, don't be surprised if God isn't changing everything in your life. Hallelujah. God's even telling something to, to buy mobile living vehicles. Hallelujah. I mean, God's doing all kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand up this morning for the initial reading of the word in Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. And the word says this in verse 28, and afterward. And what is afterward? Well, afterward wasn't just for the day of Joel. It wasn't just for the New Testament church in Acts chapter 2. And afterward also was a prophetic promise after the restoration of the nation of Israel that a mighty revival was coming that's going to touch the earth. How many know in the late 1940s, God restored Israel miraculously as a nation? Amen. So the prophet Joel is looking into the generations to come and he's saying, and afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. How many of the Lord, how many of the Lord didn't say, I'm going to pour out my spirit on church people? He didn't say, I'm going to pour out my spirit just on the bride. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all people. We're about to see the spirit of God poured out on heathens. Amen. We're about to see the Spirit of God poured out during pride parades. We're about to see the Spirit of God poured out on mosques. We're about to see the Spirit of God begin to fall in mighty ways. Get ready. That's why we don't want to think exclusively in this hour. The Spirit of God wants to pour out on all flesh. But what does the Lord say to us as believers? Our sons and our daughters will prophesy. The Lord says, not just your sons and daughters in the natural, but also the spiritual sons and daughters that he's going to have you raise up in this hour. And your grandkids, amen? He says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. And by the way, the Lord says, and it's not just for the men. The Lord says, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. He says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Another translation says the great and terrible day of the Lord. What are we about to see in the days that come? We're about to see a great move of God in the midst of very difficult circumstances. The question is going to be, where is your focus? What you focus on determines what you miss. Focus on Jesus and what he's doing, and it's going to be an amazing time. Focus on the difficulty and the challenge and the terrible things that are happening, and things are going to be difficult for you. The Lord says, watch your focus at the end of the age. Can I hear an amen? amen? And what does the Lord say? There's going to be a mighty harvest. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors yes. whom the Lord calls. How many in this room are called? Yes. But how many know the word says many are but few are. How many are willing to walk as his chosen at the end of the age? Amen. Amen. If you're willing, sit down this morning, please. Hallelujah. So the Lord has allowed me in previous sessions to, to preach on the remnant church. But the Lord dialed it deeper for me as I was spending time with him over this weekend. And I started hearing Holy Spirit talk about the remnant heart. 
The Lord took it from corporate down to individual. It's like Jesus in Matthew 16 going to Caesarea Philippi and asking the disciples, who do men say that I am? Some say John the Baptist. Some say one of the prophets, Elijah, Jeremiah. Well, who do you say that I am? The Lord is saying today, I want you to not only be a part of a body that has a remnant, that is a remnant body like this is, but the Lord says, I also want to cultivate within you, cooperate with me, because I want to give you a remnant heart. Hallelujah. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. So you know me, I opened up the dictionary that's right there in the secret place. And I looked up the word remnant, and I want you to hear this in the, with your ears and the spirit. A remnant is a small remaining part. It's what is left over. It's an indication of what has been. It's a remainder or a residue. <laughs> Let me read that again. It's a small remaining part. It's what is left over. It's an indication of what has been. It's a reminder or a residue. Church, I'm here to tell you, Every revival that's happened in the modern age was just a beginning point. All the great outpourings that we've seen from Wales to Toronto to Azusa Street to, to Florida to Lincoln to all these other places, they were just the beginning of God opening up the spigot of revival. God always releases a forerunner and many of these revivals that we've seen in what we would call the modern age were just the forerunners of what is to come. But many in the church, many denominations, many peoples after those revivals walked out of them unchanged because they focused on the signs, the wonders, the miracles, not on Jesus and allowing themselves to be transformed by the Spirit of God and they walked out unchanged so now they're walking Walking in a manner where they've lost what it is that God was doing in those revivals. But the Lord says amongst his people, there is a residue. There is a remnant. There's those that are watching and believing that there's more than what we've known the church to be. That there's a church that's arising greater than the Acts chapter 2 church. That there's a church rising up that hates religion but loves Jesus. That there's a church rising up so lost in the Holy Spirit that they don't even know who they are anymore. There's a church that's rising up that's going to change the world. Amen. The Lord spoke through Mike Bickle a number of years back and he said, I'm going to change the expression of Christianity in one generation. Yes, yes. And I believe this is the generation where God's going to change the expression. And as the Amen. expression changes, so is the function. As the function changes, so will the position. And as the position changes, everything will then begin to change. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about the aspects of the remnant heart that God was speaking to me. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. How many want a remnant heart in the Lord? Amen. 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 So we're going to go to Mark chapter 4, and I want you to notice something that the Lord is saying here. Hold on to the words that God is releasing. This message is important for the year that we've entered into. I want you to notice what the Lord says in Mark chapter 4, verses 24 and 25. The Lord says this, Consider carefully what you hear. The Lord says this year, I want you to be very, very careful with what you allow to enter into your ears. Amen. Are you going to let CNN enter your ears all year long? Or are you going to let the Spirit of the living God speak into your ears? Are you going to let people who aren't listening to the Spirit of God speak into your ears? Are you going to listen to be what's being released from the throne room of God? The Lord says this year, I want to anoint your ears to hear what it is that my Spirit is saying to the church. God says, tune into my news station. The Lord says, listen to my media. The Lord says, have your, your ears and your eyes open for what it is that I'm saying and I'm releasing in this hour. Amen. So the Lord says, consider carefully what you hear, he continued, for with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. And even more, whoever has will be given more, 
Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. How many received that in the Lord? This is what I want you to understand that we're going to really see beginning this year more than ever before is a great divide between the mainline church and the remnant church. We're also going to see a greater divide between those that have a corporate, let's keep doing church the way we've always done church heart, and those that have come out from among them and have a heart surrendered to the Holy Spirit and want to be a part of God's end times move no matter what it costs them. And we need to be careful in this hour because the Lord is saying, be careful what you hear. Why would he say that? Be careful what you hear and then talk about the measure in which we use something. Because what we listen to affects our actions. It affects our thoughts. And the Lord says, this is the year where the measure that you use, what I've given you, what you're hearing, what you're receiving prophetically is so important. And to use it rightly, because if you use it the way I'm calling you to use it, God's saying, I'm going to give you more. But if you don't use it, the Lord says, you're going to run the risk of losing what you already have. See, this is a very important year in the Lord, folks. We don't have time to say, well, next year or the year after that or five years after that. How many know the Lord is coming back soon? Amen. 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 So as there's this great divide that's going on, I really believe that we're going to see two groups of believers or believers allowing God to do one of two things in their lives. There's a group that's going to press into the Spirit of God and they're going to move forward. And there's going to be a group that embraces the current culture, spiritually, socially, politically, and they're going to fall back. See, this year I believe there's two pathways and there's no in-between. We're either going to move forward by surrendering the Lord and going after Him with all of our hearts, or we're going to move backwards. I don't believe there's going to be any holding ground and staying where you are. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. And God, that's not a threat from the Lord. That's God saying, I want you to understand what I'm doing in this hour. It's an hour of the kingdom moving forward. It's not an hour of staying in the same place, and it's not an hour of retreating. Amen. None of us should be able to exit 2022 the same way we came in. We need to exit more committed to the Lord, in a deeper place in the Lord, more surrendered to the Lord, have become more like Jesus, more filled with the Spirit of God, walking in what He's called us to be, a transformed people. Come back. Holy Spirit is saying this year we're either going to move forward or go backwards. And the ones that are going to move forward are the ones that are going to press into the Spirit of God. And say to the Spirit of God, everything that you want to do in my life, I surrender to that. Now, can you imagine if this church was filled with a group of people that in the secret place said to the Lord, Lord, I draw near to you. I want more of the Holy Spirit. I want to decrease so that you can increase. Lord, I want to walk in what you've called me to this year and give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord Jesus. I want to yield to the Holy Spirit. I want to please the Father. I want the Lamb of God to receive the full reward of the suffering. What would happen on Sunday mornings if this was a body that did this individually throughout the week? Yeah. Sunday morning would be an explosion in the Lord. Yes, yes. Let me say that again. Sunday morning would be an explosion in the Lord. Amen. Because Sunday mornings aren't to be the time where we come to get fed and to be filled. We're to come Sunday morning being fed and filled from our individual quiet times with the Lord all week long. And then we come together on Sunday morning to celebrate what God's been doing. The Lord says, I want to deliver the church, the church from the I come to church to get filled up mentality. He wants us to walk in the mentality of I come to church filled up so that I can pour out on yes. Jesus yes. and on his people. Amen. Yes. So we've got to understand the kingdom of God is not a place where we can stay the same. This year we're either going to move forward or we're going to lose ground. And so what does the Lord say that he wants those that desire to cultivate a remnant heart to do this year? The Lord says, I want you to hear my voice. I want you to respond to my voice. And I want you to obey. 
Three things, and this is the first aspect of the remnant heart. He said, those that are cultivating a remnant heart at the end of the age, they hear my voice, they respond to my voice, and they obey my voice. The Lord says, if we're willing to do that, more is going to give, be given to us. And I heard the Lord say, as he was speaking this, I heard the Lord say strongly as the king, he said, I am the Lord God Almighty. I don't make suggestions. And I went, whoa, that was strong. He said, I don't make suggestions. And I want you to understand that the Lord Jesus is now speaking to the church as the king. The days of the, the humble slain lamb have run their course. Now we're in the age of the Gentiles that's coming to an end. The Lord Jesus is going to fall upon Israel. We're going to see a mighty worldwide revival and the Lord is going to come back. But he's coming back as king. Right now he's trying to teach the church how to crouch into a place of submission and humility and surrender so we can receive him as the king. I got a few amens on that. The king speaks differently than the gentle shepherd did. He says, he says things like, I, the Lord your God, do not make suggestions. I give commands. When the king speaks, we're to listen. Right now, the Lord is trying to deal with a lack of submission and rebellion in the heart of his people. And he's dealing with some of that even in our body. He's dealing with some of that even in me. I'm going to be honest. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, I'm calling you to submit to my authority, not just my authority from the throne, but the earthly structures that I put in place. And if I speak through my authority and you choose to do your own thing, the Lord says, that's rebellion. And, and you know that I'm not a big authority guy that, that lords authority over anyone. You know that's not my heart. But God speaks through authority structures he puts in your life. And sometimes when we hear the voice of God, we run into the mistake of thinking, because I hear the voice of God, I don't have to listen when other authority that God has placed in my life speaks. I can just do my own thing because I hear the voice of God. That's not submission to earthly authority, nor is it submission to heavenly authority. And God's got an issue with it. Praise the Lord. Did I just speak that in love? And by the way, he's taking me to the same school. So I don't think pastors are speaking. And the pastor's in the school with you right now. Since the beginning of the year, I've been watching God wanting to get some rebellion and lack of submission out of our body. And I've seen some success and I've seen some failure. And the Lord says it's time to grow up so that we can go up. Amen. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? And we can spiritualize it. We can call it anything we want to. We can be led by the Spirit, but rebellion's rebellion. Let's not disguise it by I was led by the Holy Spirit. No, you weren't if it wasn't being led in authority. We need to understand this in the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Okay. So we've got to understand that in Luke eleven twenty eight, the Lord says this. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So how many know if we're cultivating the remnant heart that the Lord wants us to have, we not only hear the word of God, we respond to the word of God, and we obey the word of God. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. The remnant church at the end of the age is not going to hear the voice of God, acknowledge it, and then walk away unchanged. The true church with the remnant heart will hear the voice of God, acknowledge it, and be willing to shift if what God is saying brings a shift. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen? In fact, we've got to understand, and this is so important in the Lord. Let's go to James chapter 1 and verse 22. James chapter 1 in verse 22. How many can already tell this is not an incredibly easy word today? Oh, yeah. Come on. How many received that word? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Notice what the word says in James chapter 1 and verse 22. The word says this. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Now, you know what I hear people quote when they quote this verse? Don't just listen to the word. Do what the word says. 
They don't bring up the fact that the Lord is saying when we listen to the word, but we don't do what it says, we're walking in deception. And the Lord is saying, I want to remove the spirit of deception from my church. The Lord says deception comes when he speaks. Whether it's a corporate word, you're reading the Bible, whatever it may be, when the Spirit of God speaks, if we don't respond in obedience, no matter how God brings that word, the Lord says we run the risk of opening up the door to the spirit of deception in our lives. And the Lord says be careful because at the end of the age, many will be deceived. How many received that in the Lord? So you're ready for this? I heard Holy Spirit speaking this, and so I looked up deception. Deception is an illusion, a fraud, subterfuge, or a ruse. It comes from the Greek word apositesi, which means to take. So when we hear the word, but we don't do what the word says, the Lord says we're walking in an illusion. What's the illusion? I'm pleasing God. I'm right with God. I'm doing what God wants. Not if we hear the word, but don't obey it. And even now, the spirit of deception has been sent out in the earth to try to deceive the church and move her away from what it is that God wants to do in the end times. Very specifically, it's Joel chapter 2, end times move. There you go. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. See, we've got to understand that. The enemy knows. How many know the enemy knows the word better right, than we right. do? Yeah. He knows there's a great end times move of God coming. So what's he trying to do? He's trying to move the church into a place of deception. So that we don't even recognize the end times move of God. And even worse, to blaspheme and look at it and go, that's not God. That's not the move of the Holy Spirit. How many are receiving this in the Lord? Yeah. And right now, many denominations are being deceived. They're Come beginning on. to say it's okay to welcome in homosexuality. Yeah. It's okay, okay to welcome in any type of lifestyle. As long as it puts butts in seats and brings in an offering, then it's okay. And the Lord's saying, I, the Lord your God, do not change. Yeah. Now it's easy for me to speak that word and us go, yeah, absolutely. I'm seeing that in the church. The water's being, the gospel's being watered down. All these things are happening. But it's tougher to take it into our individual level and go, you know what? We can very easily walk in deception if we're not careful. And the word says it begins, James 1.22, when we hear the word of God, but we don't obey the word of God. That opens up a door legally for deception to come in. And before we know it, we can be walking in an illusion. And all of a sudden, we begin to realize what in the world has gone on in my life. Because the Lord is moving forward and we're, we're caught in a place. The Lord says, I want to dislodge you. The Lord says, I want to take you into a deeper place. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So if we want to walk in the remnant heart of God, number one, the Lord says, I want you to hear my voice and obey. How many know that, it's, that the Lord says, I desire that all my sheep would hear my voice. But it's a deeper level of surrender and submission to God to hear his voice and obey his God. voice. In church, a lot of things this year are going to come down to obedience. God wants to do it. Will we be obedient and walk it out? Yes. So when the Lord says, I want you to fast because there's something mighty I'm going to do, do we hear it and we do it? <laughs> or do we hear it and go, oh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's for Brother Scott. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's for Sister Karen. Yeah, that's for Neville and Chanta. Yeah, that's for the fasters. The Lord said, no, I told you to fast because I want to move. The Lord says, if you will, then I will. Amen. Right? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from my throne. I'll forgive their sin and I'll, hear the, I'll heal the land. If then. We've got to understand that. There's a lot of amazing things God wants to do this year, but he's asking us to do things. Will we be servants that are willing to fill the pots so that he can turn the water into wine? Because if the servants weren't willing to fill the pots, there'd have been nothing to do the miracle through. 
He's saying this year, will you fill the pots? Will you fill the pots so I can turn the water and the wine? Can I hear an amen? Amen. Here's the second thing the Lord says about cultivating the remnant heart. He said, those that want to walk in the cultivation of the remnant heart this year, he says, I want to give you a sense of urgency. There you go. Oh, oh, yeah. Folks, if you're going to get anything in this word, get this. We don't have time to waste. We've got to be willing to go all the way for God. We don't have time to waste. We've got to be willing to go all the way for God. Does anybody receive that? Let's go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. I know I'm getting quickly, but going quickly, but there's a lot that God wants to speak today. You can go back and, and review the message via Facebook or YouTube, amen? <laughs> If you want to get uh, more in-depth information that's being released or go back over it. Isn't it wonderful that, that we have the messages recorded and broadcast on Facebook and YouTube? Isn't that a blessing in the Lord? And God's expanding our territory and, and adding new people that are listening. And some of those that are listening in, God's calling you into the house in this season. Please come in the name of Jesus in obedience to the Lord. You know, it's interesting that the church in Jesus' day was not a whole lot different than the church in our day. You know, in fact, I said to the guys Tuesday night in, in Guy's group, after we were studying it about Israel going around and around and around the mountain and complaining about the manna and not liking the, the water from the rock and all of this and grumbling and complaining, I looked at the guys after saying all that and I said, aren't you glad we're not like Israel? <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. They started laughing because I was being facetious how many know we're, we're a picture of Israel? We're grafted into the vine. Sometimes I see more family resemblance than I'd like, even in my own life, to things that I see in the Old Testament. But it's interesting because as Jesus is ministering and he's feeding people and he's doing signs, wonders, and miracles and he's pouring out his power and lives are being touched and changed, multitudes are following him. I mean, when he feeds the 5,000, that's only 5,000 men. That's not counting wives and children. When he fed the 5,000, he easily could have been feeding 20, 25,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen. Also, based upon what Jesus did, we need to remember this this year. Our God is the God that multiplies. Our enemy divides. Amen. And anything going on that's bringing division in the body is not of the Lord. Okay. See, God wants to multiply in this house this year. Okay. Schisms, divisions, rebellion, these things the enemy wants to bring to try to divide and conquer. But in the name of Jesus, we're going to stand in unity with the yes. Spirit of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? As part of his remnant body. Now, it's interesting. Jesus is preaching to the multitudes. He sends out the 70 Right? Um, he, he calls the twelve. Amazing things are happening. Thousands of people all over excited about what Jesus was doing. You know, they believe five to six million people just came out to, to be baptized by John the baptizer as the forerunner. So how many people do you think were following after Jesus when signs, wonders, and miracles were happening? But then he starts preaching the cross and the crowds thin. See, in the church today, when Jesus starts talking about the cross, the crowds thin. We love the messages about encouraging things. We love the prophetic words that God's doing amazing things. But when we get the word, God wants you to die. Yes. Do we hear that word and obey it? If we don't, we've opened up the door to deception. That word's for someone else. That's deception. I don't need to listen to that word. That's deception. And we don't want to walk as the first church of the yeah. illusion. We don't have time to do that. Yeah, and you don't have time to walk like that either. Neither do I. So by the time Jesus dies and rises again and says, go into Jerusalem and wait, where are the crowds of thousands upon thousands upon thousands? Where are they? There's only 120 in the upper room. See, the Lord went from thousands upon thousands upon multitudes to 120 that were really serious. And as God begins cultivating his remnant church with a remnant heart, 
coming out of the multitudes and multitudes and multitudes will be the 120. Now, don't take this wrong in saying pastors prophesying over a whole 120 are going to come. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's a prophetic picture. Can I hear an amen? amen. I want you to notice what the word says here. In Acts chapter 1, verse 14, how many are excited about the Lord? Amen. I want you to notice what this remnant group of people were doing. The word says in Acts 1, 14, they all joined together on Thursday night in prayer. No. Is that what the word says? They all join together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. What were they doing? There was 120 people crowded in an upper room, praying, worshiping, reading the word, crying out to God, waiting for him, because they knew he was about to birth something mighty. Church, there wasn't the crowds of thousands and hundreds of thousands. There was 120 that came through all of that three and a half years of ministry to Jesus that were in the upper room. No, I'm not saying those were the only ones that were truly following him, but that's where a group was with a remnant heart positioning themselves because they believed that God was doing something amazing. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Here's the second trait of those that are cultivating the remnant heart at the end of the age. They're pressing in and going after what God is doing with urgency. See, God says right now, I want to give you a sense of urgency. How many know that the opposite of urgency is complacency? Yes. The opposite of urgency is lethargy. And the Lord is saying in this hour, I want to give you a sense of urgency. That works. And you know what amazes me in this group? God has now brought into this group some amazing folks that are retired. And the Lord is saying, you thought you were retiring. The Lord says, no, I'm just bringing you into your second career. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Lord says, your second career is you're going to be Simeon's and Anna's in my house. I don't know if you heard that. You're going to be Simeon's and Anna's in my house. Why was Simeon and Anna doing what the 120 were doing? But they were at the house of God, continuously at the temple, worshiping, praising, praying, going after God. Why? Because they believed Messiah was coming, and they didn't want to be out of position when he came. Yes, amen. That's why they held Messiah in their arms. And then they said, okay, Lord, now I'm ready. I've got a word for you from the Lord. Messiah is coming. And the Lord is looking for the 120. He's looking for the Simeons and Annas that will devote their lives completely to Him for the rest of their lives. The Lord, I retired to play shuffleboard. The Lord said, no, you didn't. I'm shuffling you across my board. And what I'm watching is people even in this body that have come here and they're in their retirement years and the Lord says, no, you're stepping into your greatest ministry. And everything I've done in your life up to this point was to prepare you for your greatest moments in me. For the younger folks in this house, God's positioning you to be a part of this mighty end times move. And I've cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm not in full-time ministry yet. I don't have the time to spend with you that I'd really like to. And I heard the Lord say, to whom has been poured out and is used for me, I will give them even more. But to those who do not use it, even what they have will be taken. The Lord said, Andrew, use the time I've given you wisely and watch how I can multiply it. Amen. See, the Lord spoke to me a couple Thursday nights ago, leaving intercession right there, and he said, stay in position. The Lord is saying to you in the midst of the season, stay in position. Don't be pulled back and forth by what's going all around, not all around you, or what you feel within you. God says, stay in position. The 120 in the upper room were staying in position. Do you think there was great personal cost to them constantly being up there praying and worshiping and reading the word? Sure there was. 
I mean, they didn't have time for that Netflix series that they were on to watch. Come on. I mean, they missed the playoffs. But you know what? They decided that Jesus is my one thing. And he said, stay in late because I'm going to release to you the comforter. And when he comes, he's going to come with power. And you don't want to miss it. 120 listened to the message and they were in position. May we be a house that's in position. Can I hear an amen? Amen. See, the, the, the end times remnant heart has a sense of urgency about God's timing and is willing to lay down its own agenda to fast, pray, and press into God. And over that group, don't, don't wander in your mind because this is important. Over that group, God says, I'm pouring out the spirit of Issachar upon those that are willing to have a sense of urgency. Church, the Issachar anointing is incredibly important. I was studying the Issachar anointing yesterday. Then Holly and I are in the vehicle driving somewhere, and we put on a, a, a prophetic video clip that, that Brother Oli had sent us. And the man who's releasing this prophetic word says, I am called to be an Issachar prophet. And I looked at Holly and I went, whoa, there it is again. There it is again. Where does this come out of? And grab a hold of this in the, in the Lord. First Chronicles 12.32. I want you to just listen to what that says. I'm going to read it in the King James. Now keep in mind the backdrop. David has been prophetically promised that he's going to be the king over Israel. This might be something that resonates in your spirit. He gets anointed as king. He's dripping with oil. He's going to be Israel's king. And then he gets sent right back out to the shepherd's fields. Didn't he? And he's taking care of sheep. But how do you know taking care of sheep, God taught him how to take care of his people. Amen. Taught him how to beat the lion and the bear. So when he faced a giant, he already had God confidence to know that he could win. Amen. But then David went through a season of disillusionment where he got so frustrated, he even went and lived amongst the Philistines and at one point was going to fight on the side of the Philistines <laughs> against his own inheritance. But God didn't let it happen. And then he's at the desert stronghold waiting to be brought into his prophetic destiny. And God brings to him the sons of Issachar. Now God brought men from all 12 tribes, including the tribe of Benjamin that King Saul was a part of. But the word didn't say this about any other group other than the sons of Issachar. So 1 Chronicles 12, 22, 32, I'm sorry. The sons of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two were two hundred, and all their children were at their command. See, the word says in, in Chronicles, as all the tribes were coming to meet David to help raise him up into his prophetic promise to be king, there was a group that stood out. And it was the men of the tribe of Issachar. They were scholars in the word. They were the carriers of the prophetic for the tribes. They walked in a powerful discernment anointing in the Lord. And they understood they were there to help raise David up into his prophetic promise. Do you know what they were willing to do? We're going to lay down our lives and our calls to help David walk in his. But you know what they also knew? If I'm willing to do that in the process, my calling will be raised up. See, spiritual parents, one of your greatest calling in the end times is to help raise up the end times army. If you don't raise them up, who is going to? And that's where you've got to go. But I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to. You know what? Take the position that God has called you to. And as you're willing to raise up the young generation, everything you've been believing that God is going to do in your life will happen. Amen. You're going to find your life as you lay it down. You're going to find your ministry as you lay it down. The sons of Issachar could have gone, we're here to flow in our prophetic ministry. God will take care of David. 
No, they said, we're going to lay down our lives and we're going to go help him become king. Now grab a hold of this word. King David flowed in a three-part ministry, prophet, priest, and king. The same ministry that Jesus would flow in when he came. The men of Issachar showed up to help David, who represented Jesus, to rise up into his calling. At the end of the age, God is raising up men and women with the spirit of Issachar to raise up Jesus' agenda so that he can come and sit upon his throne. See, prophetic history is repeating itself. And I declare you're part of the sons of Issachar. And God is raising you up to bring forth Jesus' agenda in the earth so our prophet, priest, and king can come and sit upon his throne at the end of the age. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Come on. See, we've got to understand this now. The remnant heart yearns to be a part of establishing Jesus' throne here on earth so that the Lamb of God can receive his due reward. Is anybody catching this? Come on now. But the sons of Issachar also understood when David sat upon the throne, a revival was going to come. Come on. See, they understood. They understood the times and the season, and they understood their calling. Church, I'm telling you what, if you're willing to do the little things in this point in the age... God's going to use you in some big ways. Amen. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. The Lord says in this hour, if you're willing to lay down your life for me, then I'm going to begin to use you in ways that you've never imagined. Does anybody receive that? Amen. Let's go to Luke 17. How many are enjoying this word? Amen. Luke 17, verses 5 to 10. Stay with me because there's a lot of rhema in what God's releasing over us. I want you to understand this. The word says this, Luke chapter 17 and verse 5. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Let me ask you a question. How many want the Lord to increase your faith in this hour? Do you know what Jesus didn't do to them? He didn't run over them and go, wah, Here's more faith. How many know he could have because he's the author and finisher of our faith? But I want you to notice how he answers. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say this mulberry tree be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Yes! Let's do it! And then he goes into a parable that must have made them go, what? Because notice what he says. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down and eat? Would the master say that to the servant? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper and get yourself ready to wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that you may eat and drink? Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you've done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We've only done our duty. We've got a live one here today. Praise God. Amen. Now, isn't it weird that they ask for faith? And that's how Jesus responds. Would a master who owned a servant, and the servant worked in the fields all day long, when the servant came in, would he say to the servant, just sit down and let me, let me feed you and serve you? No, he'd say, you cook the meal, you prepare it, you watch me eat, and then you can eat. You know, Jesus said that's how we get more faith. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. I've spent all day working, and I'm tired, and now I'm at home. Am I going to go and minister to the Lord? Am I going to go spend time with Him? Am I going to go serve Him? Or am I just going to do my thing and expect the Master to feed me? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know, it's interesting that... It's not uncommon on a Sunday when, when Holly and I have had the privilege of spending the entire day with the body. Some Sunday nights we get home at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. 
by the time everything is done that's needed to be done that day, I'll get home and I'll hear the Lord say, come down to the secret place. That's when I have to realize yeah. what this parable is saying. Am I going to go, no, it's time for me to eat and it's time for me to relax and it's me time, God. <laughs> Does this convict anybody? Or am I going to say, you know what? I've been serving the master, but now my master wants me to feed him. And I'm going to go and minister to him and spend time with him. See, this is the day and age where Jesus isn't asking for 10%. He's asking for 100% of you. Does he matter receive that? And you know what Jesus said? If you're willing to do that, I'll increase your faith. Hallelujah. See, but I, I think in, in the church society, we've grown up in the church age, we haven't been taught that there's times in the Lord where we feel like we've done everything that we should do, only to hear the Spirit of God say, now come spend time with me. Yes. And we've got to have the heart that Jesus spoke of in this parable and say, Lord, I will feed the Master before I eat. Lord, I will minister to the Master before I refresh myself. Because he is the master, I'm the servant, and I'm here to do what the master says. I will come. Mm. Grab a hold of this word from the Holy Spirit. We're about to enter into the great end times harvest. Do you believe that? Yes. Will you minister in the field and then come in the house and minister to the master? Will you come in from the field and still serve the master? The Lord says, if you do that, your faith will be increased. Can I hear an amen? amen. This is not an easy word, but God's speaking to us today, isn't he? Yeah. Okay, maybe he's speaking to me. Hopefully you get the overflow from that. Amen? Now, it's, it's interesting that when we're talking about a third aspect of the remnant heart, the remnant heart wants to be in the center of God's will. At all times. You know the word says. And then we'll be able to understand. What is the good will of God. The pleasing will of God. And the perfect will of God. How many know that's three aspects of the will of God. Good, perfect and pleasing. That's levels of the will of God. The Lord had me speak that a few Sundays back. And since then he's burned that out of my heart. And I've cried out to him. God in any way that Holly and I. Are in your good will in anything. Bring us into your pleasing will. Lord, if we're in your pleasing will in anything, bring us into your perfect will. Lord, if there's any place we're outside of your will, bring us into your will, Lord Amen. Jesus. Because, Lord, I want to do everything in a manner that keeps me in the center of your will. Can I hear an amen? amen. See, the remnant, 120 in the upper room, Knowing God was going to do something, but having no idea a suddenly was about to happen. Where tongues of fire were about to come. See, you don't have to understand exactly what God's about to do. You just have to be willing to be in position and be ready. Amen. He says, Amen. now is the time to be ready in season and out of season. He says, now is the time because you don't know when the master is going to return. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. 120 wanted to be in the center of God's will. What's the danger of not being in the center of God's will? The danger is going backwards instead of forwards. Okay, I heard one. That's true. It's going backwards instead of going forwards. Go to Ezekiel chapter 34. Do you want to know what God's about to do in the church? You want to know what God's about to do in the church? See, we've got to understand the word says something begins with the house of God. What, what was that? What begins with the house of God? Judgment. See, the problem is right now the church wants a blessing when God is bringing judgment and refining on the church. But if we submit to the judgment and the refining, we'll be blessed. See, sometimes the blessing comes in a manner that we don't understand. That's why we've got to hear and listen with spiritual ears and eyes. Because what is coming right now, we're not going to make it if we're walking in the flesh. The flesh cannot, cannot perceive supernatural principles and happenings. 
That's why God's calling us out of the flesh and into the spirit. He's put a moratorium on fleshiness. And he's saying, I want to teach you how to walk in the spirit because what is coming must be perceived in the spirit. The things that were once hidden are now being revealed, but you'll only perceive them in the spirits. To those walking in the flesh, there'll be foolishness to them. We've got to understand this in the Lord. Now notice what the Lord says in Ezekiel 34, 17. How do we know that the Lord is speaking this word? Amen? Amen? How do we know the Lord is speaking it? As for you, my flock, this is what the sovereign Lord says. So how do we know God is speaking to us even in this generation? Amen. He says, I will, I will judge between Amen. one sheep and another. Now he's talking about sheep there. I will judge between one sheep and another and between the rams and the goats. Is it not good enough for you to feed on the good pasture? Must you also trample on the rest of the pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clean water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drank what you've muddied with your feet? The church of this day has trampled and muddied the pearls of revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to notice what the Lord says in verse 20. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Whoa. Isn't that interesting? He says, I will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Let me ask you a question. He's talking about sheep here, isn't he? Yes. And we are his sheep. Yes. But he says, in my pasture, there's two types of sheep. There's fat sheep and there's lean sheep. And I'm going to judge between them. One group represents the corporate church. The other group represents the remnant church. God says, I'm going to judge between them. Does anybody receive the word? Amen. So what is a fat sheep? A fat sheep is always eating but not digesting. It's always hearing but never perceiving. It's always being fed but never changing. And all it's doing is just becoming plumper and plumper and plumper and plumper. Who are the sheep that are lean? They're the remnant that are receiving the word of God and going based upon what he says. The fat sheep are sedimentary. The lean sheep are moving with the spirit of God. And what does God say? I'm going to bring judgment between. Come on. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. What is God saying right now? He's saying to a sheep, Deep is calling unto deep. I'm calling you into a deeper place in your fullness in the inheritance of Christ Jesus to be a living sacrifice manifesting Jesus wherever you go. Yes. You see, remember those 120 in the upper room? They were seeds. Those 120 were seeds. And they were going to go into the ground and die. <laughs> In prayer, in fasting, in the Word. They were really willing to die. They could have been out doing other things, spending time with family, feasting, asking what in the world's going on. Jesus died. We didn't expect it to happen. We hear He showed Himself 11 times to people. What are we going to do? No, they locked themselves in the upper room, 120 of them, and prayed and worshiped and studied the Word, believing that when Jesus said stay, they needed to stay. And when He said go, they needed to go. They were surrendered to him. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. See, the 120 were seeds. And when the day of Pentecost came, 120 seeds blossomed into 3,120 in a day. See, the Lord says, unless the seed goes into the ground and dies, it can do nothing. But if it will go in the ground and die, it will bring forth a harvest 30, 60, a hundred folds. 
but it will not bring forth a harvest unless it's willing to go into the ground and die. The fat cows will not go into the ground and die. The lean ones will. Is anybody catching what God's saying in this word? Come on now. See, we've got to understand something. The Lord loved that 120 even though he ministered to thousands upon thousands upon thousands, he loved that little remnant of 120. Let me tell you something, church. It's not going to take thousands of people to turn this region around. It's going to take a remnant of 120. Amen. See, we've got to understand that. Why do we get together Thursday nights and fast and pray and cry out for the region? Because we're the 120! Hallelujah. And the 120 is over at that intercessory service and over at that intercessory service and over that intercessory service. We're part of the 120 and God can take 12 men and shake the world upside down. Amen. See, all God wants is a remnant. See, he wants the set apart ones because the set apart ones are willing to go into the ground like seed and they're willing to die. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Yes. Now I'm telling you, this word, whether you're listening here in the sanctuary or you're listening online, is going to do one of two things to you. It's either going to irritate you. Or it's going to cause you to say, yes, Lord. And if this word is irritating you, I want to encourage you to get with the Lord and say, what type of cow am I? <laughs> what type of sheep am I? Am I a fat sheep or am I a, a lean sheep? If this word is irritating you, I can give you a, a guess of where you're at. If this word is causing you to say, yes, Lord, you're on the right side of the line. See, Joshua said to Israel one day in the wilderness, he said, choose this day whom you will serve. Find a spot on one side of the line or the other. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For those that were on the other side of the line, the fat sheep, they pulled out the swords. Death came. See, if, if we want to stay a fat cow in this hour, death can come. See, there's a condition that sometimes happens. It will never happen to anyone in this house in Jesus' name or any of your relatives. Sometimes when folks get older, they can eat, 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 but digestion is slow, and then that causes an issue. Eating and not digesting the way that we should. We have the blood of Jesus over our digestive tracts. Amen? But here's the thing. That can kill a person. And the sad thing is spiritually, the fat sheep, if they just eat and eat and eat, always hearing but never perceiving, always listening but only wanting what their itching ears want to hear, they're going to run the risk of being on the wrong side of that line. Does anybody receive that? See, your reaction is going to tell you which group that you're in. Okay? You know, I say this in love in the Lord. Just because you're called doesn't mean you've arrived. You've got to press in. Hallelujah. And I've seen in the church, and I'm not necessarily talking about right here, but I've been hearing some amazing prophetic words about 2022, about what God's going to do. You know what I've also seen rise up in the church in general? A spirit of entitlement. The fat sheep have a spirit of entitlement. God spoke it, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. All I need to do is just stand here and graze and he'll give it to me. No, he said, press in. He said, press in. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Will you fast? Will you pray? Will you be one of the 120? They're the ones that are going to see the mighty move. The others are going to hear the stories. Oh. And I'm tired of hearing stories. I want to see a move of God. Amen. But most importantly, I want to see my God in the move. Amen. Yeah. Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen. Many are called. Few are chosen. Who are the chosen ones? The ones that say, I want to be a lean sheep. I want to press in. Yes, I know you've called me. I'm willing to press in the submission, to crouch. Remember the, the Lord said to Cain, sin is crouching at your door. That's the wrong crouching. The Lord is saying to his church, I want you to crouch into a place of submission and surrender. I want you to press in. Can I hear it, Amen. Amen. 
What's another trait? Now summarize all the traits because I'm going through some of them quickly. Here's another trait of those that are cultivating the remnant heart. Are you ready for this? Don't, don't let me lose you right now. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11 is the call of the remnant heart and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the power of the testimony. Now that's where most pastors stop. Because the rest of the verse is, and they loved not their lives to the very end. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, there's more to this than what we've realized. Well, what are you trying to say, Pastor? What I'm trying to say is, is this. You know, when we study righteousness, there's two types of righteousness. And this is a message in itself that maybe God's going to let me get to at a later date this year. Lord said, so there's going to be a lot of teaching and instruction this year coming out of this house. Amen, Amen Brother Scott. Yes. Hallelujah. A lot of teaching and instruction. There's two types of righteousness. We say righteousness and we just think righteousness. Right standing in God through the blood of Jesus. That's what righteousness is. Do you know when you really study righteousness, there's legal righteousness and there's fulfilled righteousness? Yeah. Or you could put it this way, there's imputed righteousness and there's imparted righteousness. See, we've got to understand this, and this goes into a deeper realm of understanding. Okay, So where does my legal righteousness come from? I receive Jesus as Savior. I confess my sin. I repented. I believed he was the Son of God. He died and rose again. I asked him to come into my heart. The moment that happened, a legal transaction took place. I passed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I was legally righteous through his blood. Hallelujah. But see, he, here's the thing. There's more than legal righteousness or imputed righteousness. See, the, the thief on the cross is on one side and he's confessing who Jesus is and he says, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. What did Jesus say? Today you will be with me in paradise. He had imputed or legal righteousness at that very moment that Jesus spoke. Wow. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. Fulfilled righteousness is something that we grow into. It's something that we learn to walk out through the Holy Spirit. Because I've seen people with legal righteousness that don't know how to love. I've seen people that are legally righteous through the blood of Jesus that don't even know how to love God. And see, in everything, God wants you to progress and grow, right? right? So that baby birthed out of the womb is going to go from baby to toddler to child to teenager to young adult to adult to senior citizen to returning back to Jesus. See, everything in the natural realm is only a parallel of the real truth in the spirit realm. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. So when you get saved and you have legal righteousness, the Lord says, okay, that, that you're saved, your name's written in the book, but now through the sanctification of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit leads you through that process, I want to get the you out of you. I want to teach you how to love. I want to teach you how to just release me out of every pore of your body. I want to teach you how to walk in a righteousness that just flows out of you at all times. My righteousness fulfilled. See, how many received that? Amen. See, a lot of us are still walking in a place of legal righteousness. If we, if we walk in legal righteousness, we love in levels. Well, Pastor, what levels are those? Thank you for asking. Um, when we love in levels, we generally love people based upon how much they're fulfilling our expectations. And if you're fulfilling my expectations, I love you a lot. If you're not fulfilling my expectations, I love you a little bit. If you've hurt me, I love you a little bit. If you've blessed me, I love you a lot. We love in levels. How do you know the agape love is a love that doesn't love in levels? He loves you with an everlasting, stubborn love that won't give up. In fact, the most difficult day of Jesus' existence was not Calvary is the day he's going to have to say to a lot of people that he loves, depart from me, I never knew you. Oh. 
K and E W in the in the Koine Greek is a man knows a woman. He wasn't talking about a pseudo sexual relationship. He was talking about intimacy. Not only knowing the Word of God, but knowing the God of the Word. Ooh. Can I hear an amen? amen? Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Is this a deep word? Yeah. I mean, this is a deep word. When you are transitioning out of just walking in legal righteousness into fulfilled righteousness, one of the ways you know how is you're starting to love people like Jesus loves them. And you will weep and mourn and grieve and fast and pray over what's going on in your generation that grieves the heart of Jesus. You will lay your life down and be seed. See, there's a lot of people in the church walking in illegal righteousness, but they're not fulfilling it. The Lord says, I want you to not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. He says, I, not want, I want you not just to walk in my righteousness or receive it, but I want you to fulfill it. Yeah. I want you to release it in everything that you do. Can I hear an amen? amen? We've got to understand this. Hallelujah. We must die to walk in fulfilled righteousness. Now, I want you to grab a hold of this. This is very important in the Lord. Love is not just being nice. It's laying down your life for the advancement of God's will. The Lord said, greater love has no man than this. Then he laid down down his life for his friends. You are my friends. The Lord said, if you hear my word and obey it. See, is anybody receiving that in the Lord? Amen. See, there's a place we can get to in the Lord where we don't love like us anymore. We love like Jesus loves. That's a powerful breakthrough and shifting in our lives. How many love want to love like Jesus loves? Well, come on now. You have to love your enemies. You're going to have to love the guy who passed out on Broadway yes. on Saturday night. You're going to have to love the LGBTQ community. Yeah. Yes. You have to love the prostitute on the corner, and you have to love the John that visits her. Come on now. Yes. You've got to love the person that hated you. You've got to love the spouse that divorced you. Do I need to keep on going? See, you love like Jesus loved, not in levels. Why does Jesus love people so much? Because when he looks at us, just like a father looking at his child and seeing part of himself in his child, when Jesus looks at us, he sees himself in us. Does anybody receive that? Yeah. See, God wants to change us completely. Can I hear an amen? amen? Here's another aspect of the remnant heart. The remnant heart is not consumed with its own life. It's consumed by Jesus. So we've got to understand, if we were going to go to the temple in the Old Covenant, the temple in the Old Covenant and the new temple that Israel is going to rebuild is going to have three sections to it. See, our God is tripartite, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He made a spirit, soul, and body. The temple had the outer court, the inner court, and the Holy of Holies. Now, I want you to grab a hold of this in the Lord. Those three sections exist in the church today. There's outer court people, there's inner court people, and there's holy of holies people. That's three levels. The Lord said, then you'll know my will, my good will, my perfect will, my pleasing will. There's three levels to the temple. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Do you know most of our generation, our church generation dwells in the outer courts. I'm saved. I have legal righteousness. I have fire insurance. I can live my life the way that I want to and believe that when I stand before the Lord, that's going to be okay. That's where a lot of the church is walking. And they'll say things like, well, pastor, I can do this because the grace of God will cover me. Whoa. The word doesn't teach that type of theology. Grace is not sloppy. It costs Jesus everything. And it's not something that covers our willful, sinful acts. It's the power to overcome sin. Amen. Does anybody receive that? Yes. So there's a lot of people today in the church in the outer courts just believing that they've done enough to be saved, but they don't really want to surrender their lives and they don't want to be seed that goes into the ground. Does anybody matter receive that? Yeah. Come on now. We've got to understand that in the Lord. 
We can plant our seed. We can eat our seed. We can hide our seed. Mm. The Lord said, be the seed that goes in the ground and dies. How many received that in the Lord? So a lot of people tell me that this is that this this you know is is in Christ. I don't think you can. So many in the church today are in the outer courts, but there's people also. There's a smaller group in the inner court. They're saved. They flow in the gifts of the Spirit, but they're still not really that surrendered to the Lord. And some of them are saying, because I flow in the gifts, God's okay with me. Wait a minute. The gifts of God are without repentance. And I've seen messed up people flowing in the gifts. Yeah, there you go. Hallelujah. Because God in His grace doesn't shut it off. And I've seen people in the world becoming millionaires using the gifts of the Holy Spirit for the world. Yeah. And they'll get up there in the music awards and they'll say, I just want to thank my Jesus. <laughs> He's the one that gave me this ability. Yes, He did. I'm just saying something that I'd be embarrassed to even hear, you know, in the darkest of places. I want to thank my Jesus. Well, you're right. That's where the anointing came from. Just because we flow in the anointing doesn't mean that we're an inner court people. It just means we've learned to flow. Yes. Come on. That's why you should never be impressed by a person's gifts. Look to see if they have a remnant heart. And people say, but pastor, he flows in this and she can do that and they can do this and they can do that. Yeah, but what's the heart of the person? Yeah. Are they walking in surrender to the Lord? Are they walking, <laughs> hallelujah, in fulfilled righteousness? Or are they walking in their own will, in their own ways? Let me know the heart. Can I hear an amen? amen? But there's a holy of holies people, and those are the ones that have laid down their life for Jesus and want to walk, hallelujah, in intimate love with him. They say to themselves things like, I will follow the Lamb wherever He goes. I will give myself to Him completely. I'm willing to die so that He might live. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? Amen. You know, I'll be honest with you. I want this building to be like the temple. When people come into the parking lot, I want them to enter into the outer court. When they come into the foyer... I want them to enter into the inner court. As they're coming around the foyer, I want them to enter into the Holy of Holies. Where are you at in your walk with the Lord? Do you have an outer court walk? Do you have an inner court walk? Or do you have a Holy of Holies walk? Do you know what? And I'm going to say this in love. Your walk with the Lord is exactly where you are satisfied with it being right now. And the enemy of God's will for your life is satisfaction. Because the moment we're satisfied, we stop. What do you do at a meal when you're full? We should stop eating. But the problem is, when we get satisfied spiritually, we don't press anymore. We don't push anymore. We get stuck. We, we, we get hammered down to a spot we can't move and the Lord starts saying things like I want more of you I want more time there have been times I'll be honest I've cried out to the Lord in the secret place and I said I want more of you and it echoed through the heavens you 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 only hear the Holy Spirit say back I want more of you 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 and I go wait a minute he said draw near to me and I'll draw near to you See, the Lord loves hunger, and the remnant heart hungers. The Lord loves thirst, and the remnant heart is willing to thirst. Most in the church age don't want to hunger or thirst. It costs us. It's uncomfortable. It's not enjoyable. And we want to come in and believe this thing. If we serve the Lord, everything's going to be wonderful, and it's going to be incredible. The Lord says, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> But I did promise that we'd do amazing things together. Amen. See, so might receive it. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand this. Hallelujah. That the veil has been torn and we can go in. We can go through the blood of the Lamb. And the Lord is saying, there's a glory realm that He's calling us into. Come on. See, the things that were once concealed in previous generations have now been revealed. Does anybody receive that? Do you hear the calling of the Lord to go deeper? 
Amen. Amen. Please don't ever come here thinking you're coming to a normal church. I don't want that. I want us to be that remnant church that presses deep, that goes deep. And guys group, I want us to go deep. Ladies group, I want you to go deep. Thursday night prayer, I want us to go deep. Sunday morning, go deep. In your quiet times, go deep. I want us to be a people that go deep. You know, there's a certain fish in the depth, deep depths of the ocean that God created that if it ever comes out of the deep depth, it just dies. It implodes from within. And if a fisherman catches it and pulls it up, it's dead by the time it ever gets to the boat. May we be like that fish made for the deep depths of the things of God. And if we ever get even near the shallows, it just doesn't feel right to us. Has anybody received that? Amen. Amen. And, and this is the, the, the last thing that I want to put out there in the Lord is regarding cultivating the remnant heart. The remnant heart surrenders its will to the Lord Jesus. And I say this for last because this is the toughest one. Surrendering your will to the Lord Jesus. Let me say that again. Surrendering your will to the Lord Jesus. I want you to notice John chapter 5 and verse 30. John chapter 5 and verse 30. Anybody want the deep heart of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Anybody want the deep heart of Jesus? You know, the Lord is saying the time is short. We don't have time to walk in offense. We don't have a, a time to walk out of obedience. We don't have the time for rebellion. We don't have the time. We don't have the time. We don't have the time. We've, what we have is the time to surrender and press in if we don't want to miss what God is going to do in our generation. Can I hear an amen? Amen. You know, what did Jesus say in John chapter 5 and verse 30? By myself I can do nothing. I only judge as I hear and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself. I seek not to do my will but that of the one who sent me. What did Jesus say to Pilate? Pilate said, I've got the ability to take your life. Jesus said, you don't have the ability to take my life. I willingly lay it down. In the day and age that's coming, there may be some in this room that are going to be martyred for the cause of Christ. I've asked the Lord, Lord, I want to go out as a martyr for you. My wife's not real thrilled with that, by the way. She let me know the other day. I heard you say that. That's my heart. That's just praying it's a long time before it happens. But you know what? We've got to understand this. Even if we lose our life at the hands of persecutors, they didn't take our lives. We laid them down willingly to Jesus. The axe, the saw, the gun, the knife was just confirmation of what we'd already done. And that was we laid our life down for the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen? But see, here's the challenge. Our will is part of our soul. Our soul is tripartite. We're spirit, soul, and body. Within our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. The Lord says, I want to teach you how to walk in your spirit, with the spirit of God, not in your soul. And in your soul is your will. And the problem was before you got saved, all you knew was your will. I like, I feel, I want. That's what you knew. Now when we get saved, we're to surrender our will to the Lord. But it's hard because all we've known is our will. Let's be honest. And a lot of people in the church today are willful. I want, I want, I want, I want. And sometimes we'll even disguise an I want with Holy Spirit told me to do it to try to spiritualize what we already wanted to do and did regardless. Hallelujah. And, and I see it happen in churches all over the place. I've fought it in my life before. There's things where I've just kind of wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I'll be honest. So I went to this prophet. Oh, didn't get the word I wanted there. So I went to this prophet. Oh, didn't get the word I wanted there. So I went to this prophet. Oh, didn't get the word I wanted there. Oh, so I went to this prophet. Oh, and that prophet spoke in line with what I wanted to do. That's a good prophet. And that's a good word. God said it. That settles it. I'm doing it. And in our spirit, the whole time we know Holy Spirit's going, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. 
But the word says in the end days, men will surround themselves with a multitude of counselors who will speak to them what their itching ears want to hear. That's deception. Yeah. That's deception. Success is finding the will of God for our lives and doing it. Deception is wanting to do our own will and try to disguise it as the will of God. That's not an easy word, is it? By the way, I'm preaching to me today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. One more scripture, Philippians chapter 12. I'm sorry, chapter 2 and verse 13. Philippians 2, 13. This is not an easy word. Well, Pastor, why are you speaking this word today? Well, number one, Holy Spirit said to Number two, we kind of went from this excited New Year's Eve celebration and excited about what God's going to do, and we've kind of drifted a little bit on sensing in the Spirit. And Holy Spirit is saying, get back in alignment. It's like God said, all these amazing things are going to happen, and then some flesh has kind of cropped up. Can I say that? And I'm battling some of my own flesh. And the Lord's saying, get back into that place of surrendering. I said I was going to do it, but you need to surrender and crouch into submission and humble yourself and do what I tell you to do so that it comes forth, like I said. Come on. Now you're a well. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so the Lord says in Philippians chapter 2, God's good, isn't he? And verse 13. You know, please come back next week. The word said, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his purpose. Who works in you to will and to act according to his purpose? God. So when we do what? Surrender our will to his will? He empowers us and works through us to accomplish his will. Amen. So it's not like we surrender our will to God and it's like, okay, this is no man's land. What's going to happen here? No, we surrender our will to God and then the Holy Spirit joyously partners with us and says, now I want to teach you how to fulfill God's will for your life. Amen. But surrendering our will is tough. Surrendering our will is tough. It's challenging. <laughs> See, I, I'm going to go home after you know service today and potluck and in servant leadership, and my flesh is going to say, "You're tired." Is my surrendered will going to say, "Go feed the master before you eat"? Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. What what am I going to say? And if I'm willing to say no, I'm going to go down the secret place and feed the master, and then I'm going to eat. I know that my will is now being swallowed by his will. I know that I'm learning to die so that he might live. Right? When my wife gives me a prophetic word, that's the last thing I ever want to hear. Ooh. Am I going to go? Oh. Wow. Or am I going to surrender in humility and surrender my will to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, you're speaking a challenging word through my amazing life. And I will listen. And I will listen. See, this word is the place early in 2022 where the proverbial rubber meets the room. And the Lord is saying, there's some things out of alignment. I want to bring them into alignment. Are you going to let me do it? Because you got really excited over what I spoke at the beginning of the year. But then some fleshiness came in. Are you going to surrender to this word and let me get you back in line for what I want to do? This may be one of the strongest words that God's ever had me release to this body. But it's for me right along with you. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's for me right along with you. So I want to take just a moment and I want to summarize these points. So there's eight things or eight signs that you are walking in a remnant heart. You're cultivating the remnant heart at the end of the age, and it's this. So number one, the remnant heart hears the word of the Lord and obeys. So the Lord said, if you're going to cultivate a remnant heart this year, don't just hear my voice, but obey my voice. And a lot of people in the church right now, are, are because the, the prophetic is becoming so popular, 
let's be honest, you know, and, and, and folks wanting to release words on YouTube and all this, and some of these folks are totally of the Lord and anointed. Yeah. Other folks just yeah. kind of want to release words on YouTube. Oh. Holy Spirit knows who's releasing his words and who's not. Okay, I'm not here to judge that. But the Lord wants us to cry out, Lord, not only do I want to hear your voice, I want to take that next step, acknowledge it, and obey. Yes. Because if we hear and hear and hear the word of the voice of God and don't obey, two things can happen. We stop hearing the voice of God because the Lord stops speaking and deception comes up. And we can get to the point where we've exchanged the truth for a lie, the lie's deception, and now we're in trouble. Yes. Secondly, those cultivating the remnant heart at the end of the age have a sense of urgency. I don't have 10 years. I may not even have five years. So at the time that's left, I'm going to be serious about the things of God. And I'm going to pursue God with all my heart. Less TV, more Jesus. Less food, more fasting. Right? Less doing my own thing and more prayer. I want to have the heart of the 120 in the upper room. Thirdly, those that want to cultivate the remnant heart at the end of the age have a heart's cry that says, I want to help establish Jesus' throne here on earth. I want to walk in the anointing of the tribe of Issachar and help establish my prophet, priest, and king, the Lord Jesus, on his throne. Fourthly, those that are cultivating the end times remnant heart want to be in the center of God's will. Lord, I don't want to walk in anything else, anywhere else, but only in the center of your will, God. God, I don't want your pleasing will. I don't want your good will. I don't want your acceptable will. God, I want your perfect will. In every part of my life, God, and I'm willing to let you align me with your will. For some of us, it's a... For others of, of, others of us, it's a... Where God has to kind of get us there. It depends upon how much we're willing to cooperate with the Lord. I've, had the, heard, I've heard the Holy Spirit say this to me more than once. Andrew... I want you to do this. We can do it one of two ways. The easy way or the hard way. Andrew, you just let me know. How are we going to do this? And I've learned to say, I'll take the easy way. Door number one, please, Holy Spirit. Um, that's what I want. And the Lord said, like, you need to surrender your will. Um, number five, the, the remnant heart, hallelujah, those cultivating it, they don't love their lives even until the end. You know, Revelation 12, 11 is two-part. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the power of the testimony. That's legal righteousness because that right is theirs, right? From salvation. They love not their life until the end. Fulfilled righteousness because that's a falling out of love with ourselves and a falling into love with Jesus. We'll never fulfill the will of God in love with ourselves. We'll fulfill the will of God when we're in love with Jesus. <laughs> How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. 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 Number six, and I just kind of subtly said this, those pursuing to cultivate the remnant heart at the end of the age, are their heart is consumed by Jesus. Their heart is consumed by Jesus. This is the place, church, where your family is going to say, what happened to you? This is the place where your family is going to say, that's not balanced. This yeah. is the place where your family is going to say, why are you doing this? But I'm going to say this in the Lord. We're called to love our families and to walk in the roles God's called us to. But there's also going to be a place of deeper surrender where you're going to have to tell your family at times, Jesus said, I need to spend this time with them. And I need you to understand. There's times where I'm just heading downstairs that I could spend with my wife. And my wife looks at me and she goes, how long are you going to be down there? Because she just knows. If we're not careful, our spouse can be our Jesus. If we're not careful, our family can be our Jesus. Not an easy word. My wife is willing to make sacrifices so I can be who I'm supposed to be in this hour. And I'm willing to make sacrifices so she can be who she's supposed to be in this hour. And sometimes I'll hear people say, but my family, my family, my family. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, their family's their Jesus. Yeah. 
and they're spiritualizing this. Okay? Please don't send me a nasty hallmark. God is speaking this to me, and if you're irritated, there's a reason. If you're saying, yes, Lord, there's a reason. Amen? This is not a message that draws people in. I, I get it, but I'd rather have 120 pressing into Jesus than 20,000 that just want to eat bread and fish. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please know my heart. And every, every single bit of this is for me too. Um, number seven, the, those that are cultivating a remnant heart at the end of the age are called to go, not to stay. They're called to go deeper, to go further, and to go higher. You know, it's interesting in the garden that night where Jesus was going to be betrayed, he took the disciples and he said, will you pray with me? And the word says, and then he went a little farther. And then he comes back and they're sleeping. And he shakes them. Will you not pray with me one hour? And then he goes a little farther and he prays. And he comes back and they're asleep and he shakes them again. And he shakes them to the point where he has to say to them, okay, now my hour has come. My hour has come. Church, the hour is coming. Don't let him find you sleeping in the garden. May he find you awake and fasting and praying and seeking. He says, it's time to go. Go deeper. Go, go further. Go higher. Can I hear an amen? amen? And then finally, the eighth aspect of the heart, the remnant heart being cultivated for Jesus at the end of the age is that it surrenders itself to the will of the Lord Jesus. It surrenders itself to the will of the Lord Jesus. Please know that this message is not aimed at anybody. It's aimed at everybody. All of us. And even some of the things that Holy Spirit was speaking today that's not in the notes, I cringed because I knew it was for me too. And that Holy Spirit is getting at the Andrew and Andrew. Because you may look at me and go, man, I see pastor, and, and, I, and I think pastor's just in this place. You know what? Pastor's on the journey with you. Amen. Pastor's learning how to die with you. Pastor's learning how to surrender his will with you. And after over 20 years in ministry, I've come to the place in the last year where I've realized that where things, where I thought things were wasn't where they were. Even in me. And that the Holy Spirit is teaching, reteaching me some things all over again and bringing me into alignment with Him on these things so that I can go where He wants me to go. Is anybody living in that same house with me? Is anybody living in that same place? I think this word is for every single one of us. Amen. Do you receive this word? Amen. Do you receive this word? Yes. See, this is the thing in the Lord Church. The Lord is saying, we're coming into the final hour. Church, I don't, I don't think we're going to see beyond 2030. I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't think that we are. So you can do the subtraction. Okay? Eight years, Hebrew number of new beginnings. We're coming into a new beginning in the Lord. We're coming into a new season in the Lord. And the Lord says, I can't allow you to enter this new season the way you've entered previous seasons. He says, you need a new posture to enter into the new season. And he says, the new posture isn't this. It's this. Yes. He says it's the eye of the needle where the camel had to get on its knees and crawl to get underneath the gate. He said in this new season, you're going to have to go lower so you can go higher. Amen. The Lord says in this new season, you have to surrender so that I can use you in a mighty way. The Lord says this is the season where I want you to lay your life down so that I might live. Through you, this is the season. 
So the Lord told me when this message was released, there's going to be one of two reactions in hearts. We're either going to be irritated or we're going to cry out, yes, Lord. I want to encourage you to take this word, and even if it's irritating, take it to Holy Spirit. And let Holy Spirit take irritation to yes, Lord, in your life. Guys, if I didn't love you, didn't love this house, and didn't care about my accountability to the Lord, I'd have preached just a word that you'd have just been so pleased with today that it made you feel wonderful of you as you walked out of the building and made you thought, man, our pastor's just the greatest pastor in town. Well, you know what? Your pastor's on the journey with you. And God said to preach a word today in obedience to him. I've released the word. Amen. May this word be like good seed that goes into the good ground of your heart and bears fruit deeply below, or bears roots deeply below and bears fruit above. I want this to be the year that you spread your eagle's wings in the Lord and become everything he's called you to be. Folks, prophetically, the Lord is saying this year is going to be the great and the terrible. We're going to see some very difficult things go on this year, spiritually, politically, socially. But God is marking the ones that are really his, and he's preparing them in the secret place. And in the midst of difficult times, incredible things are going to happen in your life. But the Lord right now is saying, it's time to go deeper. It's time to go deeper. I don't want the same you that came into 2022 to be the same you that exits 2022 and enters 2023. I want to do a work in you, the Lord says, that will cause you to not even be able to recognize yourself at the end of this year. Because the Lord says, so much of me will be coming out of you and pouring out of you. Does anybody want that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Scott, do you have a word in your hands? Come on up, brother. I see that work <coughs> in that paper. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Please, brother. So guys, um, I've been a Christian for 38 years. And there have been a couple times in life where I've actually worked full-time for the Lord. I've been an office manager in the church. Karen and I um, managed a huge dormitory for a ministry for two and a half years. And, um, you know, I, I did what I needed to do for the Lord. You know? But um, in the last few weeks... Things have been quite different. So I wake at 2 or 3 in the morning and begin to wrestle with the Lord. And I, I wrestle in this way. Lord, I want to be closer to you. I want to be close to you. I want to be closer to you. I want to hear you. I want to see you. I want to sit down with you and I want to listen to what you have to say. I want to I want to be absorbed into your bosom, whatever that means. I, I want to be part of you. And so I, I just mention, I, I just say this, because what Pastor's been talking about today, I've been seeing, and I'm sure a lot of you are too. But I, I, I just, I don't know, I think confirmation's not the right word, it's not for you from the word, but I'm just telling you, it's real. And um, I was I was drawn there by the Lord. It's, it, it, it's like uh, it, it came upon and I responded and that's the way I responded. It's not like I made a decision, you know, like, okay, it's two o'clock in the morning and I want to press into you in this way. I, I just responded. So that's my encouragement to you guys. Um, right. So <laughs> here's something else. I've I've learned in the last couple of months to keep a pad of paper by the bed, and 
This comes from one of those two or three o'clock morning notes. There's a flashlight there and a pad of paper. So, you know, have a pad of paper maybe by your bedside and write down what happens at two or three in the morning because sometimes at eight in the morning you don't remember. So, so Pastor, that's just kind of what I want to share from my heart. Thank you. You know, I know Brother Scott will just confirm what I'm about to say in the Spirit. We're watching God do amazing things in people's lives in this body. And I'm so proud of this group because the word I'm preaching today, so many in this house are already walking in it. For some, it was just kind of a reminder, for some, a tune up, for some, an overhaul. You know, it just all kind of depends on where we're at, outer court, inner court, holy of holy. But I'm seeing change in people's lives. This was not an easy word. This was an aligning word. But God's also very excited in the midst of this word because I'm watching people yield and surrender to him. I'm watching people in this house go deeper. I'm watching people in the house be willing to do things they weren't willing to do before. And it's not because I'm going to them and saying, you need to, you need to, you need to. It's because you're listening to the Holy Spirit. And I'm so proud of you. We're doing this together in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Without Him, we can do nothing. Yet through Him, all things are possible. So let's keep moving together. Amen. Amen. I am going to put a plea out to this house right now. We need more intercessory coverage over this house. I want to cry out to our intercessors to spend more time in prayer for this house for where God's going to take us in this new year. I am committing, Holly is committing more time in prayer for this house. There was something that was going on and, and I just sent a, a text to Holly Bailey and said, Holly, can you be praying about this? It was something related to the house and she sent a question back and she's saying, is there enough intercession in the house? And I, I knew that was not a question. That was a statement. And so I want to ask you to devote more time in intercession, to, to see God's face, to cover this house, to cover Holly and I, to cover the servant leadership team, and to cover people in this house. The enemy, I was talking to prophetess about this this morning, and she brought it up. The enemy's trying to bring sickness against this body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've watched the enemy try to bring offense against this body. I'm watching the enemy bring some familiar weapons to try to throw at us. I want you to stand with me in prayer to come against these weapons. Because the Lord said no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And we'll refute every tongue that comes against us. For this is our heritage as servants of the living God and vindication from me, declares the Lord God Almighty. So I want to ask you to devote some more prayer. I felt warfare more in my life since the beginning of this year than I ever have in any other time in ministry. I'm going to ask you to pray for me more. Humbly I'm asking for this. For Holly more. For our marriage. For our servant leadership team. The marriages in the servant leadership team. When I said sometimes people make family Jesus, I wasn't saying family's not important. We need to cover the marriages in this house, yes. in the blood. Okay, We need to have Jesus' priorities. We need to stay covered. Amen? Right. Yeah. So please understand my heart. There's the, Cindy's in the hospital right now. I got to visit her yesterday. I got to go up and pray over her. The Lord made, made it so I didn't even have to go by the COVID testing center. I didn't have to put on the suit. I didn't have to do anything. God let me slide right in. I got to spend almost an hour with her. I got to pray over her. Oh, we prayed together. And she sent me a text. And she said, right after you left the floor, the nurses came in. And they said that I looked like I was glowing. Wow. We give the Lord the glory, don't we? 
But the Lord just let me slip by everybody and nobody asked a question. And when we were done, slip out and then the nurses come. That was just God. Amen. But we've got people recovering from COVID. We've got the enemy trying to make discouragement with the COVID they're recovering from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this house needs prayer. Yeah. The enemy brought so much breakthrough New Year's Eve. And then the Lord brought so much breakthrough New Year's Eve. And now the enemy just shoom, mm-hmm. is trying to come mm-hmm. in. But we're not going to be discouraged. We're not going to be dismayed. We're not going to be afraid. For the Lord our God is with us wherever we go in Him this year. Do you receive that? Amen. Uh, so I, I'm going to ask Rob just to turn off the lights for us for just a moment. Let's just bow our heads before the Lord. And is there anything that God is speaking to you about from this word? God spoke to me in eight points today for me. How many of those points was God speaking to you in? Surrendering your will, laying down your life, becoming a seed, hearing, acknowledging, obeying. What points was God speaking to you in? Whatever those points were, I want to encourage you, just take a moment before the Lord. And just listen to the Lord's heart and surrender to Him. I'm telling you, church, we cannot be willing to stay the same any longer. We can't be willing to say, oh, the river's flowing. God is saying, I want to turn the river into an ocean and the ocean into a sea. And I want to cover this house with the glory of the Lord like the waters covers the seas. I heard God say that this weekend in the secret place. And I went, yes, Lord. There's so much he's promised for 2022 corporately and individually. He says, now I want to position yourself. I want you to position in submission. Ooh. Because I don't want to miss anything that God's promised. I don't want to miss anything God says he wants to do. Go deeper. Go further. Go farther. So I want you to live in the, the home of the fan motor and the furnace. And amongst the scent of the crock pots, I want to encourage you to take a couple minutes with the Holy Spirit regarding the word that he released today. The Lord had me speak to Geo throughout 2021. God's not microwaving son. He's crockpotting you. We are in the Lord's crockpot. And he's taken us from medium to high. He's turning up the temperature. Let's not become irritated. Let's become surrendered. Lord Jesus, I thank you that the word says that you don't forget the baby in the birth canal. How could you? Because
because that baby is so precious to you, Lord. Lord, I thank you corporately here. You don't forget the baby in the birth canal. You don't forget the baby that's been birthed. Lord, you don't forget. And we thank you for that right now. Lord, right now there's travail going on in the nations. Lord, an earthquake in Fiji, an earthquake and volcano in Fiji could possibly bring a tsunami to the west coast of the United States. That travail is going on. Lord, nations are rising up against nations. Travail is going on. And Lord, in the midst of it all, the firmament yearns for the sons of God to be revealed. Heaven yearns for the sons of God to be revealed. Lord Jesus, I cry out that the sons of God would be revealed in this house. That the sons of God would be revealed in the apostolic state of Illinois. That the sons of God would be revealed in the United States of America. That the sons of God would be revealed in Israel and throughout the earth, even in the Muslim nations, Lord. Lord, we're about to see some things strengthened and other things weakened. But Lord Jesus, I thank you that in our weakness, you are strong. Lord Jesus, in your name right now, Lord Jesus, we just repent as a body. Lord Jesus, we repent as a body for any rebellion against you. Lord, we repent as a body for any stubbornness against you. Lord, you said that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is like idolatry. Lord Jesus, we repent of rebellion and stubbornness. And Lord, we ask that you would cleanse this house of witchcraft and idolatry. And Lord, we ask that you would realign us with your will and your plan for this house. Lord, I thank you that when you spoke to Abraham and Sarah, you said, nothing is too wonderful for me. Lord, I thank you. There's wonderful things that you've promised this body. Lord, some of them seem to borderline on the impossible, but Lord, you specialize in the impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. So Lord, the things that I'm believing in my heart for this house, myself and my family, Lord. Lord, the things that I'm believing for, for the Refuge Church, Lord, I believe those things are going to come forth, oh Lord God. Because, Lord, many of them have an element of the impossible attached to them. But we serve the God of the impossible. Lord Jesus, now I plead your blood over this body. And, Lord Jesus, we send your blood against the spirit of infirmity. Lord, we send your blood against this attack on physical bodies, against minds, against emotions. Lord, we send your blood against every weapon coming against this house. And Lord Jesus, in your name, we break every hex, vex, curse, and spell that's been sent against this house. We break every word curse. And Lord, if we as believers have spoken negative words about this house, people in it, Lord, even against people in leadership in this house, Lord, we repent for that right now, Lord. Lord, we repent for using our mouths, Lord, at times. Lord God, to bring forth good water and bitter water. Lord, we repent for that, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you would help us bring our mouths into alignment with your word and with your truth, Lord. Lord, help us in this house to be lean sheep. Not fat sheep, Lord. Lord, help us in this house to be a humble people after your own heart. Lord, help us as a house, Lord God, to desire to go deeper, to go further, to go farther. Lord, may we be willing to go down so that we can go up. Lord Jesus, I plead your blood over this house today, and I ask that you would pour out the balm of Gilead over this house. 
Lord, I ask that you would release your healing power over every person recovering from sickness in this house. Lord, we break every curse, hex, vex, and spell of sickness coming against us. We break that through the blood of the Lamb, and we command that weapon to fall harmlessly into the abyss right now in Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, I declare that everyone in this house, we will live and not die, and we'll declare the works of the Lord. Lord, that we'll walk as the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Lord, I plead your blood over this house. Lord, I pray, may you raise up the intercessors in this house to a higher level of intercession. Lord, may you take those who pray into a deeper realm called intercession. And Lord, I ask God, may you stir up the heart of intercession in this house like never before. And Lord, we call in more intercessors out of the north, out of the south, out of the east, and out of the west. Lord, we call forth the righteous remnant into this house to stand with us. Lord, we call forth the heathen to be saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit, sanctified, and to become fellow warriors. Lord Jesus, I decree and declare that this house is going to fulfill your purpose in the midst of this generation, Lord. And Lord, I plead your blood over every person in the sanctuary and every person listening in. And I bless them right now in your name, Lord Jesus. I speak healing over them in your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask you to release an anointing over them that breaks the yoke. And Lord, I ask God that if any of us are stuck, and Lord, I think so many of us feel stuck in some ways, God, break us loose. Lord, pour an anointing of oil over us, God, that will break us loose and move us forward, Lord God. And Lord, may we walk as the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Lord, may the blessings of obedience of Leviticus 25, Deuteronomy 28, and Malachi 3 pour out over this house, God. Lord, I thank you. You said I'll change your position and I'll change your condition. So, Lord, I ask that you would strengthen feeble knees in this house. Lord, I plead your blood over Brother Shane, who's in a place right now he didn't expect to be. Lord, I ask God that you would deliver him. Lord, I ask that you would set him free. Lord, I ask God that you do a miracle. And may he be back amongst us quickly, Lord. Lord, we declare Pastor Cindy's going to be out of that hospital bed quickly. And back in this house, preaching the word and walking in authority. And Lord, I declare she's going to come out of that hospital room walking in a deeper anointing, in a deeper joy, and in deeper power. And Lord, we speak total healing over her physical body, head to toe. Lord Jesus, I plead every your blood over every marriage in this house. And I speak this will be a house of strong marriages. And Lord, that people having trouble in their marriage will come here to have their marriage strengthened and healed. Lord Jesus, may this be a house of kingdom marriages, the kingdom of lights. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, may you just take this house to a whole new level. In you. Lord Jesus, now I pray. Lord, as we move out of this segment of the service, but not out of your presence, God. Lord, I ask that you'll bless our time of food fellowship. Lord, I ask that you'll bless our time Lord God, of talking about, Lord, the business needs of the house. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'll also bless those listening in online today. Lord, there's many online listening in that you want to bring to be regular participants in this house. Lord Jesus, I call them forth out of the north, out of the south, out of the east, and out of the west. Lord, we need the intercessors to join us that are watching online. Lord, we need the co-laborers to join us that are watching online. Lord, relocate people watching online out of other states into this region to be a part of what you're doing in this house, in this region, and in this state, Lord. And Lord, we trust you for the financial needs and everything we have for what's coming. Lord, we trust you for the finances for full-time staff members. 
Lord, we trust you for the finances for this house, this building, rehabbing, remodeling. We plead your blood over the title of this building, Lord Jesus, and the future of it. And Lord, we declare it's ours in your name, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we declare we're yours, Lord. Lord, now may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the thoughts of our minds be pleasing unto you. Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from us, but restore unto us the joy of our salvation and renew a right spirit in us. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you bring this house back into alignment with you, with Jesus, with the Father in every area. Bring us into the center of your will, corporately and individually. Lord, may we be a remnant house and people for you, a house of prayer for the nations. And Lord Jesus, we pray this now in your precious name, through your blood. For you're the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by you. And Lord, I thank you. You're about to pour out your spirit on all flesh. Our old men will dream dreams. Our young men will prophesy. Lord, you'll pour out your spirit even upon your maid servants, Lord. Lord, we're looking forward to Joel 2 being poured out now in our generation. Lord, use this house as a staging center to release things through that are going to go throughout the earth. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, missionaries, revivalists. Lord, folks that are going to go throughout the earth. In the spirit of Issachar and bring godly change. Godly catalysts for you in the spirit of Issachar. If you want the spirit of Issachar, I want to encourage you, put a hand up before the Lord. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would pour out over this group the spirit of Issachar. Lord, I ask for that multifold anointing. Lord, may we be scholars in the word. Lord, may we carry your prophetic call for your people. Lord, may we understand the seasons and the times and our calling. And Lord, may you bless us with the wealth of the seas and of the sands. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would pour out the spirit of this car over this house. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would pour out on this house everything that you want to pour out and that you would remove everything that you want to remove. Lord, may you release the spirit of multiplication over this house, and may you remove any division, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we ask, we declare, we lay this house down at your feet, Lord Jesus, and we lay our lives at your feet. Have your way in this house, Lord Jesus. Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done in this house as it is where you dwell. And Lord, give us a heart to come out of the harvest fields and serve our master dinner and stand and wait before we feed ourselves. Holy Spirit, we desire a relationship with you like Catherine Coleman had. Bring us in the deep relationship with you, Holy Spirit. May we be hearers of your word, acknowledgers of your word, and then may we be obedient to your word. And Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. For he said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go forth and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Lord Jesus, we responded to your choosing. And you said, then you'll ask of the Father whatsoever you will in my name, and he'll give it to you, Lord. John 15, 16. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the blood. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. There's no other name under heaven given to men by which they can be saved but the name of Jesus. Lord, send the Acts chapter 2 tongues of fire over this house and may this 120 be seed that goes in the ground and dies and brings forth a harvest a hundredfold, a thousandfold, a hundred thousandfold, a millionfold for you. 
a billion fold, a trillion fold, God. Lord Jesus, we don't need the metaverse. Lord Jesus, we need you. Lord, help us now to watch what we hear, to use wisely what you've given us so you can give us even more. And Lord, anoint this house to pour out our time, our talents, and our resources with all of our hearts for the King. Lord, help us be faithful in what you've given us so you can give us so much more to pour out. Lord Jesus, we ask this in your precious name. Lord, even give us the calls, the blessings and anointings that you have for other houses in this region that they don't want, that they don't want to use, Lord, that they're not interested in. God, pour it out on us, Lord. Yeah. And Lord, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would restore to this house what the enemy has stolen and what the locusts and canker worm have eaten and even what people have stolen, Lord, including a youth group, Lord. Lord, we ask for restoration, restitution, and reconciliation for this house and for everyone that's a part of this house. Lord, those that come here physically and for our virtual congregation. Lord, now I ask that you would anoint us as we look into the hills from where our help comes from. Yeah. Our help comes from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Lord, he who watches over us doesn't slumber. He who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Lord Jesus, you are our first love. And we love you with all of our hearts. Lord, help us to move you into that place of our first love all over again. In Jesus' name we pray through his blood and the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of the Father. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.